everyone, today I am finally filming the most requested video on my channel in regards to educational content and that would be how you distinguish the different types of doll hair from each other. The reason why this is so requested I think is because whenever I do dolly transformation videos or tutorials that involve hair I often reference hair types because the way you go about treating different hair types to get the best results is different. A disclaimer here, I am not an expert on this topic. I don't really think there's such a thing as an expert on this topic because there's no like school you can go to to learn about the types of doll hair. Most collectors, like myself included, get their knowledge based off of a few factors. One is experience, so experience in terms of how many different kinds of dolls you have from how many different eras and also your experience with how those types of hair or what you think are those types of hair respond to certain hair treatments. The second would be what you hear from other collectors and this is where things get kind of messy because we all accidentally give out incorrect information sometimes. I'm guilty of this myself. So when one collector tells you, no, 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 that's this type of hair, people believe that and spread it around and there gets to be a lot of misinformation out there. And number three, this is the most reliable way to get information about doll hair, is through websites that are designed to sell hair types that are meant to match certain manufacturers of dolls. So for me personally, most of the information that I have compared my experience to is from these websites because I feel like they're the ones in contact with manufacturers because they want to give you the best match. And so they have confirmed many times that yes, this is where Mattel buys their hair. Yes, this is what Hasbro used on My Little Pony. So I'm gonna link those websites down below. The one that has the most detailed information on this is dollyhair.com. That being said, there are hair types that I personally don't know if I've come across or I don't have experience with to my knowledge, so I'm not going to be talking about them. But these are the main types of doll hair that I'm going to be addressing. And the important thing to focus here isn't necessarily the name, but how the hair feels because you'll notice a trend with the texture of a hair and like the thickness of a hair and how that reacts with certain treatments because that's the key here because sometimes maybe you're not so sure based on the name you might get kind of confused but if you can at least figure out like finer hair responds this way and thicker coarser hair responds that way that will really help you get I, with all that being said I'm going to get into the video I apologize for the long intro but again I want to stress that I'm not claiming to be an expert and I don't want to upset anyone if you disagree with my information check out the websites that I link below if you want to figure out things for yourself. And with that, one more disclaimer is that one of the biggest pieces of misinformation I see other collectors, myself included, I used to do this spread around, is blanket statements about doll hair types. They'll say, well, because I have an Express It Yasmin doll with saran hair, that means they all have saran hair. Or I get people a lot of times coming to my videos and telling me, no, 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 your doll doesn't have this hair type. They have this hair type because Mattel didn't use that hair type until this year. And the reality is that the larger the manufacturer, specifically like Mattel and MGA and Hasbro, they have a lot more money, they produce a lot more dolls, and therefore there are almost always hair variations. So never buy a doll because, based on the hair type because another collector told you they all have saran or whatever hair type you're looking for because you're going to be disappointed. I've been there, I've, I've taken other people at their word and then found out, oh, there's variations. Because a lot of dolls are released from quite a few years, like they keep manufacturing them, they're manufactured in different factories, they run out of hair types. And that being said, don't overcomplicate it. Think about the manufacturer. Monster High, certain Disney dolls, Barbie, these are all Mattel. Likewise, Bratz, LOL, OMG, Boxy Girls, those are MGA. These are all from the same company. So just because Monster High is a different brand or Barbie is a different brand, that doesn't mean that they're gonna have like unique hair types. Likewise, just because a doll is from 1980, that doesn't mean that they're really all that different from a doll of today because these companies all order from the same distributors and manufacturers and so you should think of it on a broader scale not down to the individual dolls. So with that being said, let's get into it. 
so the first type of hair that I'm going to talk about is actually one that I'm not really sure the name on, and I'm not really sure that any collectors agree on what kind of hair this is. So this is kind of the nameless hair type. I call this the 60s Barbie hair type because it's notorious, like there's nothing else quite like it, and a lot of people are afraid of this hair type. It's basically what you see on the early 60s Barbies. It's really coarse like thick and wiry feeling almost. It's dull in color and it tends to oxidize with age so that means that as it is exposed to the elements it will change color. So black hair types will turn red and blonde hair types might get like a reddish undertone too. They kind of change color with time. Even though these are on really old Barbies, you are safe to boil wash them. They just won't have the same like soft sleekness no matter what you do. Even if you like tried to flat iron the doll hair, you're not gonna get the same result with a more modern hair fiber because of the nature of what it is. So I will show you an up close view. So this was not just a hair fiber exclusively used on Mattel products, but really most dolls from this time frame probably used it. So you can see here, that Tammy, who is made by Ideal Toys, has the same hair type here as my Bubble Cup Barbie. They're very wiry, they're very thick, coarse, gross, and even after I boil wash these dolls, they still don't look super shiny. And you can see here with like the straight, um, straight haired skipper over here, uh, it looks a bit shinier, but it's still coarse in feeling. And like I said, you're not going to be able to really change the nature of these hair types. You're not going to be able to get a Barbie with like this bouffant to go straight. I don't recommend flat ironing this because it's really not going to change the outcome in my opinion. Um, a little hack though is when dolls like this are really beat up and really old and they're not responding the best to the oil wash, you can get some kind of hair serum and use like literally a pinhead sized amount, rub it between your hands and apply it all over to damp doll hair and this will return a little bit of shine and softness to the hair. I often do this on my Malibu Barbies because they tend to be very cantankerous. So to summarize about this nameless hair type, I'm going to be following this chart that I made here uh, so you get like basic points about each hair type. So in terms of how I would describe it in texture, it is coarser, thicker, and faker feeling. It has definitely more of like a synthetic feel to it. And the dolls tend to be more sparsely rooted. This in part I think is just because the manufacturing process was different back then, but also because it's more voluminous and thicker, they didn't need to put as much in. The dolls that this is used on would be Barbies and Mattel dolls from the 1960s, even into some of the 70s and also on like other manufacturers from that time like Tammy as you can see. The best way to treat this hair and care for it is to boil wash it with really hot water and like I said you can use a hair serum if you find that it's not shiny enough but diluted gel works well too. The pro to this hairstyle is that it holds its factory style even after you boil wash it so you don't need to be concerned about like the bouffant on a bubble cut going completely straight. Even if they're pretty tangly, I don't find that they shed as quickly because their hair is thicker and I think it's more knotted on the inside. And the con to this hair type is that it's really not soft, it doesn't feel very nice, and it also isn't very shiny. It has a very dull look to it generally speaking, especially if it was mistreated in its previous life and it can lose and change color um, as it ages. The next hair type that I'm gonna talk about is my personal favorite, it is Saran. Saran hair is, um, I would say among a lot of collectors, considered like the best quality hair, but again, that's really subjective depending on who you're talking to. So the way that I would describe this hair type is that it is the silkiest of all the hair. It's also the densest and like very, it's very dense and very thick, meaning that dolls um, rooted with it tend to have hair plugs that are spaced further apart. And likewise, if you were rerooting with this hair type, you don't want to put like as much hair in each um, like knotted section because it's so thick and bulky. Uh, the dolls that this is commonly seen on, MGA is notorious for having used this on early Bratz dolls and also the 2015 Bratz. The MGA used Saran a lot. Um, 
So typically on the better quality brats, this is the hair type that people are referring to. But that's not to say that all old brats have saran hair. They definitely do not. There was a lot of there were other hair types integrated too, but it is commonly seen on them. It is also seen on early 80s Barbies. Most of the early 80s Barbies, like from you know 1980 to about 85, that's pretty much the predominant hair type you're gonna see on them. But they still use it to this day. There are still Barbies in the store that have saran hair. It's a very common hair type. And just on Mattel dolls in general, from the early 80s all the way up till now, saran is something you will commonly see. And likewise, on any NGA products, you're gonna commonly see this. So in terms of treatment and care, you definitely want to have a longer, hotter boil wash, and you do not want to use the flat iron. The reasons for this is because the hair is so dense and thick, it, it's more heat resistant when you're putting it in the boil wash. You're gonna need like a hotter temperature to be able to penetrate all the hairs. And I find that back when I was starting out and I didn't understand the difference of the hair types, I would put them all in for a short amount of time and I would find that the saran hair dolls wouldn't look as nice because their hair wasn't responding as quickly. So one of the best things you can do for a doll that's got really troublesome saran hair is make sure your water is actually boiling place the doll in it, brush her out really quickly, put her in and leave her there until the water is like pretty much completely cooled down because that's going to give it the longest amount of time to kind of suck in all that heat. And the reason why you don't want to use a flat iron is for some reason Saran really catches on the flat iron and it's really prone to burning. So even though it requires more heat um, when you're boil washing, it just does not agree with the flat iron. So I only flat iron dolls with saran hair if it's a last resort, like if their hair is really, really um, split, if it's really dull, if they're basically a step away from be needing to be rerouted. Pro to saran hair is that it is the shiniest of the hair fibers. It's very glossy. If it's in decent condition, it's extremely shiny and glossy. It reflects a lot of light. It is easy, the easiest to reroute in my opinion because it doesn't um, frizz up, it's not fly away, it doesn't like split easily. It's pretty secure and the hair tends to clump together nicely so when you're trying to make your little sections to reroute, it clumps nicely together. The boil wash will actually reform hairstyles. So as opposed to other hair types, say you have a curly haired doll um, that has connect blonde hair. If you put her in the boil wash, her curls are gonna pretty much all come out. However, a doll with saran hair, case in point with like um, my 1980s Island Fun Barbies, mine have saran, so when I put them in, their hair that was once kind of like matted looking and frizzy will actually reform the ringlets. So this is really nice if you're someone who doesn't have the ability to like redo hairstyles easily if you struggle with that. It's really nice um, because the dolls can retain their original styles. And they also don't shed as much because again, the thicker the hair fiber, I find that they lock in better when knotted inside the head. The cons to this is that because it's harder to change the style, if say you want your doll with wavy hair to be straight, it's going to take a lot more work, a lot more heat, and you're probably not gonna get as great of a result as you would with a more pliable hair type. Also, when this hair is really damaged, so when a doll has been taken poorly care of for a long time, this is not an easy problem to fix. It's not a hair type that's going to, like once it gets to like a kind of point of no return, it's very hard to bring them back to look decent. You're gonna have to put in a lot more work. And part of this is because, because it is thicker, because each hair fiber is actually like wider than some of the other types, it can actually split. Like, you can actually get split ends like you do with human hair. You can see like the hair forking out. I have not seen this on like connect lawn hair for instance. When this hair type does decide to start shedding, especially on dolls with softer heads, so like Mattel dolls, not on Bratz who have harder vinyl, but on Barbie, you'll find that saran hair comes out in whole clumps. So when you see dolls who have like entire hair plugs missing in a lot, chances are they had saran hair because it's so slippery and once it started loosening, it kind of just all fell out. All right, so I'm gonna show you some examples of saran and connect lawn hair compared to one another. So you can really, really see the difference because I think sometimes seeing them side by side is where you can really notice. So these are fashion dolls. Now, this is what I mean by you can never, ever, ever make a blanket statement about dolls. So these are both Hawaiian Fun Skippers from 1990. Pauline has six of these now. Five of them have saran hair. 
one, this girl, has Kaneko on. Most of our other um, Hawaiian fun dolls, regardless of their country of manufacture, are also all saran haired. So sometimes you get a fluke, she has Kaneko on. So you can tell right away that my Kaneko on haired lady over here, her hair is a different color. And that's because obviously these hair types are so vastly different that the hair color, um, even if it's meant to look the same, it's going to look different. I have other dolls many many examples in my collection of dolls that have like multiple hair types like this you can even tell by way, the way their bangs are sitting this doll's bangs are like kind of puffing up they're not laying down nice whereas this doll they're sitting pretty nicely you can see she's got a few split ends but other than that they're sitting pretty nicely and then from the back here this skipper's hair if i pick it up you see how fluffy that is whereas this skipper's hair you can see how it moves in larger clumps and it's not falling down as quickly and it sits nicer after I do that whereas this gets really really fluffy and big. Now this is an example of a live wig that is Kaneklon and you can see it's got that same kind of fluffy super fine nature. And these are Monster High dolls. This is Boo York Cleo and this is Picture Day Cleo. So Picture Day Cleo has Saran and you can see here that it's kind of falling in clumps. Blue York Cleo has Kaneklon, and you can see how it's just like fluffy, 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 fluffy. I know she has like blue black hair and she has black hair, but you get the idea anyways that it's like, it's, you can visibly tell hers is shiny. It's sitting in more one clump. Hers is fluffy and you're gonna find dolls in storage like that you have in a container that have Kaneklon are gonna be a lot more annoying to uh, have to constantly keep fixing up than dolls in saran. So now we have an example of nylon versus saran curly hair. Now this is where a lot of people, like I said, they think Mattel didn't use nylon until recently. Now this Sasha is made by MGA, but I have, I seen Madison dolls that have like this exact same hair. I have uh, like Mystery Squad Kenzie. They have these super, super tight ringlets and you can see how like they clump together, you would not want to attempt at all to comb this. Like, it would start stretching immediately. Also something with this hair type too, when it's nylon, you're gonna get like little broken hairs. I uh, just got a Cory Cruz Wild Hearts Crew Mattel doll recently, and when I opened her up, there were literally like little individual ringlets floating around her box because it just kind of like breaks off easily like that. And yeah, you can see especially like underneath, and I did boil wash her hair uh, a long time ago when I got her, and you can see like how the outer layers look a little bit more messed up with the inner layers. There's like these really kinky ringlets versus Sasha here. She has saran hair and it originally looked kind of like this in the box, but after I boil washed her, you can see it's more relaxed. And I literally just combed her before filming. Her hair needs to be redone, but you can see that it's like, it is shinier. So Sasha's hair is a lot shinier than uh, Stylet Sasha. See, even if you like pull Stylet Sasha's hair, it has kind of a duller look to it, whereas this is very shiny. So I've included some before and afters to show you the difference of how Saran hair compares after being boil washed to other hair types. So as you can see, these dolls are curly before, and even after I boil wash them in super hot water, they retain their curls. In fact, their curls are reformed. You'll see later with Kaneklon that this is not the case, that the hair will go pin straight. And this is not achieved with nylon because nylon will still look fuzzy after you boil wash it. You won't have these same shiny, sleek, glossy results. Moving on to Kaneklon hair. The problem with Kaneklon hair is there's actually different grades of Kaneklon. I know, it's confusing already, right? So there will be a main hair type like Kaneklon and then there will be different grades. However, with Kaneklon, it's pretty easy. And the reason why is because the type of hair, the type of Kaneklon that they use on fashion dolls is different than the type of Kaneklon that they use on wigs. So you're not gonna find like American Girl Kaneklon on a Barbie doll or vice versa. Kaneklon hair, the way I would describe it is that it is the fluffiest of the hair types. It feels very light and fluffy. It tends to kind of poof really easy. You get a lot of flyaways. It's very fine, like the individual hairs are extremely fine. It's most like my natural hair type, like my, my human hair type in, in that regard. That's how I would kind of compare it, like if you're someone with really fine hair. 
The American Girl grade of Kanekwon is a little bit thicker. It definitely feels a little bit more straw-like. It has a certain like um, thicker, more hollow feel. However, it responds to uh, treatments in much the same way. Now, because this hair type is so fine, um, you're going to find that dolls with Kanekwon hair have hair plugs that are rooted really closely together. So that's something you can study too. Like if you ever take two 80s Barbies, one who has Saran will have hair plugs that are spaced much further apart and ones that have Kanekwon, the hair plugs will be like almost on top of each other. And that's because to get the same coverage from the finer Kanekwon, they need to be placed closer together. So dolls you are going to see Kanekwon on. Notice from all the different makes that I collect, um, this seems to have popped up in like the mid to late 80s on um, just any type of doll really in general but especially on in Mattel dolls you'll notice that a lot of early 90s Barbies have this. You will see it on Bratz dolls occasionally. Now for my Bratz collectors out there the lines that this is most common on are the Wintertime Wonderland dolls. I notice that the vast majority of them seem to have Kanekwon. My Danas don't, but all my others have it, and I have duplicates of all of them. It was also on Hello, My Name is Megan. Um, I'm not sure if they all have it, but that is uh, one of the rare circumstances in 2015 where they use Kanekwon. You'll, you will see this on other Mattel products and other MGA products as well, but it seems more common for Mattel to use than for MGA to use. You also will see Connect One on all American Girls. As far as I know, American Girls exclusively use Connect One. Now, I could be wrong, but I know for a fact that they were using it at least into the early 2000s because I used to get care tags with my dolls as a kid, and in the care tags, they would tell you that this is Kanekalon. Based on my experience with newer dolls and really old ones, so I have white-bodied American Girls from 19, the 1980s, and I have uh, my sister's Rebecca doll that we literally just got for Christmas in 2019, and their hair to me is more or less the same. It seems like the newer dolls have a bit shinier hair, but that might be because they put some kind of product on it or something. And also uh, porcelain dolls, dolls with wigs, the, like non-fashion dolls with wigs tend to have Kanekalon. And also live wigs tend to be made with Kanekalon, but the fluffy kind, not the American Girl grade. For treatment and care, when it comes to the boil wash, this is really all you need to do for like fashion doll grade Kanekalon because it is so responsive to heat. However, a lot of people think they ruin Barbie Kanekalon when they boil wash it because if it's too hot of water, what's going to happen is the hair will kind of ball up in response to the heat. You haven't ruined it, you can fix it. You can just re-dunk the doll in the boil wash water at a slightly less hot temperature and comb it out and you're good to go. Not ideal to flat iron fashion dolls with Kanekalon hair. However, you can flat iron American Girl hair uh, for the really cantankerous ones like my Caroline doll for instance. I boil washed your hair, it helped some, but when you when you have an American girl and the boil wash doesn't do the trick, then you will have to flat iron them. I have a, individual tutorials on boil washing and flat ironing if you want more information on like how to do it. Also something I really recommend for uh, dolls with Kanekalon, whether they are American Girl or fashion dolls with Kanekalon, is because this hair type is very prone to flyaways regardless of the type of Kanekalon it is, you're going to want to use a lot of diluted gel on them. So by that I mean just any kind of hair gel and a little bottle of water with like two or three little squirts of gel in there. Just mix it up really well and uh, the water should have a light color to it but not strong when you don't want to put too much gel in and you just drizzle it all over the dolls top and back and that really helps control the flyaways that's going to make them look a lot shinier than they would be without the product and you can even put this mixture on dolls with, with that's hair is dry um, if say you're taking a photo that's one of my little hacks that I do when I'm taking photos or filming videos I'll usually put some gel on my connect one your dolls a pro to this hair type is due to its pliable nature, it bounces back really well. Even dolls with super dreaded hair um, that looks terrible, like you can't, can't even begin to fathom how you can save it, they will actually turn out really, really nicely. Um, and because of this, because of that nature too, it's really easy to kind of customize your styles. So say you want to reroot a doll and you want her to have really curly hair and you've bought straight hair. It would be good to use Kanekalon because you can 
put rollers in the hair and boil wash it and the hair is kind of going to instantly be curly or vice versa if you're rerooting with curly hair and you want it to be straight it'll go straight so while I'm not a supporter of dyeing doll hair because it can get really messy and stain dolls. If you do want to color your doll's hair in some way, not with human hair dye, please, but if you do, uh, the pro to connect on is because it's so fine, it's almost porous. It like, if you wash it, you'll notice it kind of uh, makes a lot of soap bubbles and stuff. It holds on to dye better than other hair types. Like if you try to color saran, because of it's like waxy, shiny nature, like any sort of marker you put on or whatever, it's just gonna, it's gonna come right off onto your hands. It's not gonna soak it in. The con to Kanaklon hair is that it is known for dreading and um, a doll shed a lot. Because it's so fine, it kind of just breaks off. So when you're brushing dolls with Kanaklon hair, you'll notice your comb is a lot fuller of hair. Even when you have boil washed them and used gel, because they still have flyaways, it makes it just really difficult to get a super polished, sleek look, especially if say you're gonna do a bun hairstyle. You're gonna tend to have little hairs poking out all over the place. And in photos, cameras, um, the light from the camera will kind of bounce off of that and make the hair look less shiny. This is also a tricky hair type to reroute because it's so fine. It gives you trouble going through the sewing needle. It's just, it tends to stick to your hands. And because it stains easily, as I mentioned before, while that might be great for dyeing, that's really bad if you, say, leave a hair elastic in their hair too long. They stain from the hair elastics. Um, if you put like a hair elastic with a metal band on it, the metal will rust into their hair and stain it a lot easier. And also, it's more finicky in the boil wash, so even though it will go straight and be more compliant with what you want, if you're new to boil washing and it, you put it in too hot water and it balls up, it can kind of be like an extra step required to straighten it back out. And also, if you are learning to boil wash and you're using a doll with Kanaklon hair, I really do not recommend starting with like a doll with Rapunzel-like hair because when it's Kanaklon, if it starts to ball up, if you don't have the temperature just right, you're gonna have a doll with like crazy long hair that you need to comb through. And me, even someone like me who is really experienced with fixing doll hair, I gotta tell you, I hate boil washing Rapunzel dolls with Kanaklon hair because it is so infuriating. So now we have two different jade dolls. This is Adventure Girls Jade, and this is Boutique Jade. Um, they, this doll here, so Adventure Girls, she has Kanaklon, and you can see that the color is a lot duller, and that's actually something too with Kanaklon, it fades over time. So you'll see a lot of dolls who have black hair or really dark brown, their hair will almost look gray as they age, way less saturated, and likewise dolls with blonde hair tend to get that gray look, whereas you're not going to see that with um, saran hair it holds its color really well so you can see how fine and fluffy it is and versus this jade I mean this is like a perfect you can really tell it's so much glossier it's so much denser even look at, looking at the ends you can see how much finer and fluffier these are whereas see her hair it comes in clumps and you can see that waxiness as I do it it's very very clumpy and then these are two American Girl dolls who have Kanaklon hair. Now, Caroline over here is supposed to have really curly hair, but um, because it was so frizzy, uh, I did boil wash her and flat iron her because like I said, this grade of Kanaklon is a little bit more stubborn, depending. And if you look at it, you can see all of these little like split pieces. So in that way, it is very much like a uh, fashion doll Kanaklon. And you can see like it kind of, it's very fine looking as you pull it out. It just has like a coarser feel because it is made on a wig. And um, your most porcelain dolls from what I've seen who also have like wigs have this kind of Kanaklon hair. So you can treat them the same way. I have like some brass key dolls and some of my grandmother's porcelain dolls that you can feel them and compare them to American Girl and they feel the same. So I was able to uh, take care of them the same way. And then Cecile is an example of curly, connect line here you can see that there are even even with her you can see all these like little flyaway bits and I think one of the reasons why um, Kanaklon is so great for like wigs is because it is finer so it's not as bulky and you can see like there's shorter hairs in the weft so it lays flatter because the hair is not as dense and here we have examples of how Kanaklon responded to just being boil washed 
this is literally what happens the hair will be really really curly really really matted and it will go pin straight and you can see here even with the bangs they will go pin straight if the water is warm enough so if you don't want to mess up dolls bangs or curls you do not want to put them in the boil wash you'll want to comb hot water through instead because you don't want to make the hair flat and then have to recurl it so you can see in the next picture I'm going to show you of an American girl this is Bethan she has American girl grade connect blonde hair however it also went straight in the boil wash because her hair wasn't too messed up beforehand heads up there's also a type of hair called polypropylene which is exactly like nylon just with a so different name so then we have nylon hair this is uh, typically seen as the worst hair type however there are different grades of nylon which makes things confusing I know now I've heard some people say there aren't different types of nylon um, don't jump down my throat. I actually got this information from Dolly Hair. She has several different types of nylon that she sells and she actually, the owner, contacted um, one of the manufacturers and got confirmation that one type of nylon was used on vintage My Little Ponies and that other types of nylon hair were used on fashion dolls. So that's where I'm getting that info. Um, I'm assuming it's correct because they actually contacted the manufacturers. The kind that you see most often is coarser, it's really thick, but lightweight. So even if there's a lot of hair, you'll see these dolls tend to have like way too much hair almost. Um, it's not going to be very heavy. Whereas if you have a doll with saran hair, their heads are going to tend to wall back because they have so much weight because the hair is so dense. Whereas a doll with a lot of nylon isn't going to feel as heavy. The kind that I like to call My Little Pony Nylon, which I have purchased this from the website and compared it to my vintage My Little Ponies. It is definitely the same and this hair type is actually really nice and it mimics Saran. You'll probably confuse it with Saran because it's very similar. The main difference to tell it apart is actually that it's like lighter weight and it responds to the boil wash more like Connect Blonde does. It's like not as um, heat resistant. The kind that people see as being the really bad type is the kind that is, um, it's very obvious when you get it. Like you're not, you're gonna know it's not a good kind of hair fiber because even as a kid, one of my style at Bratz dolls had it and I was like, what is this? It's gonna feel very straw like, very gross, very frizzy. So the dolls you most commonly see this on, this became very popular around like 2008-2009 on Bratz dolls. This was kind of when the quality went down as a lot of people say and I think a huge part of that philosophy is because the hair type was bad. It got very big and puffy and frizzy and gross and uh, 2010 Bratz especially were known for having this and people really didn't like it. Uh, you also going to see this a lot on off-brand dolls, clone dolls, dolls from smaller manufacturers like Kidcore dolls. Um, they pretty much exclusively use nylon as far as I know. Uh, you're going to see this on newer Disney store dolls. Disney store dolls are notorious for having nylon hair. Uh, you're going to see this on My Little Ponies. You're going to see this on certain kinds of doll horses. Uh, Moxie Girls, again, use nylon a lot, but obviously they're an MGA product. But these are on regular Barbies and Mattel Disney dolls from newer years. There's this misconception that Mattel only started using nylon in like 2016, I think, because the uh, manufacturer of Barbie Connect Blonde, as I call it, uh, discontinued making that. But that is actually a fallacy. There are dolls who have nylon hair from before then. I will show you. And if you see her, you'll know it's nylon. But it's mo it was mostly used like back in the day on dolls who had really curly hair, like really kinky, really curly hair. Think like Mystery Squad, Kenzie, My C Madison dolls. Dolls who had that really, really curly hair. Now, sometimes that really curly hair is connect one. Sometimes that really curly hair is saran but a lot of the times it's nylon and when you go to boil wash it you will quickly find out which type you're dealing with if you can't tell just from feeling it. The best way to treat nylon hair is that you want to start with a boil wash because if it's a nicer grade of nylon a boil wash is probably all you're going to need and even if it is a really cheap grade of nylon you are going to have an easier time doing additional treatments by boil washing first because it is going to take some of the bulk out. It's going to be easier to calm. 
it's going to help you a lot when if you need to flat iron. But for most types of really, really cheap uh, nylon, think 2010 Brett's gross, like frizzy, it stretches. That's one of the key components here to nylon. The cheap kind anyways, is it stretches and it frizzes. Um, you're going to need to flat iron it. There's really no way around it because even if you cut the hair, if you don't flat iron it, it will just kind of refrizz. So you're going to see a lot of dolls with nylon hair that have cut hair, unfortunately for that reason. And after you flat iron, you're probably going to still need to trim a little bit off the ends just to make them perfect. But the good thing is that if you flat iron correctly, you're going to be good for as long as you take care of the doll because I have dolls that I flat ironed like eight years ago that I haven't needed to flat iron again even though they've been dressed and undressed and combed and used in skits their hair did not get frizzy. The uh, pro to this hair type like I said is that um, once it's treated it's actually a very nice hair type it actually feels a lot like saran once you've uh, flat ironed it or um, if it's a better quality kind um, and you boil wash it, it'll be really nice. And the My Little Pony kind of uh, nylon hair is really easy to restyle because it's softer and finer and it's also easy to reroot. And it's also nice because it's so similar to Saran and how shiny it is. And if you have My Little Pony nylon hair and uh, you don't have any more Saran for a project, it easily blends in. I know because I've had to do this with uh, some like Jasmine dolls. Now, the con to this hair type, I think it's, we all know, it, it gets really, really frizzy. If you don't treat it, it's going to get frizzy. Even if you take like impeccable care of, say, a kid core Katie, if you do not flat iron their hair, it will get frizzy. I know because Colleen and I tried everything as kids because we didn't know what kind of hair fiber we were dealing with. And actually brushing the hair, combing the hair, brushing the hair before you've treated it is really not ideal because it actually makes the problem worse because for some reason, like the comb or the brush going down the hair just makes it frizz and poof, it's awful. It, like the cheaper quality of nylon is just not as nice. The hair colors tend to be duller and faker feeling, like it's got a very synthetic -y feel, it's not going to be very shiny, the colors aren't going to be very saturated, and this is the um, hardest type of hair to restore, generally speaking, because you need to take that extra step to flat iron it in most cases, and then you have to trim it, So, you, but once you have baby it, it's really nice. Sometimes with like strawberry shortcake dolls made by Bandai, they are also known for having nylon hair, uh, you'll see them completely bald because once it starts coming out, it just comes out, comes out in huge chunks. And I've actually found this with some Disney store dolls too, if they didn't have enough like glue put inside their head and you go to flat iron them or wash them or comb them, you'll get like whole hair plugs coming out. This kind of hair is really really difficult to root re with. Not the My Little Pony kind, but if you just get standard nylon from one of the sites. I don't recommend it if you're a first time rerouter because I tried nylon hair um, and it was awful. I used way too much. This is again a really thick fiber so you don't want to use as much when you reroot. The hair plugs are going to be spaced further apart. It's just going to get beastly. You're going to put all that work in and not be happy with the results. So it's just really not ideal for that. Um, my Little Pony nylon though is fine to use for rooting. And then both of these dolls have nylon hair. This is Costume Bash Chloe and Fashion Surprise Avery. So this is a Moxie Girl and a Brat doll. And I chose them because they each have blonde hair with purple streaks and they both have nylon hair. However, this is one of the MLP, like My Little Pony nylon dolls. So the biggest difference, I wish you guys could feel these with me, is this doll has super soft hair, whereas this doll's hair feels coarser and you can see like when I pick it up, it kind of clumps together. Whereas she has like all of these little fibers, so in that way, the uh, softness of it reminds me very much of Kanekwon. And then this is a comparison between Saran hair and nylon hair on Mattel dolls. So these are both Sleeping Beauty dolls. This is 2013 Forever Fairy Tale gift set Sleeping Beauty, and this is 2010 Bath Beauty. And like I said, there's that myth that Barbie dolls, Mattel dolls didn't use nylon until recently, but you can clearly see that her hair, I flat ironed it, it still looks dry. It still looks kind of dead. You can see where I had to trim it because it was so bad. Whereas this doll has saran and it was boil washed and it's much shinier. The color is supposed to be the same, but you supposed to have golden blonde hair and you can see how much more saturated 
and like full of life this hair is. Even from the front here, you can see that this Aurora's hair kind of just sits like hay and her bangs are um, also not sitting the nicest. And that's because she has nylon hair. And these are some examples of nylon hair. However, these after shots are not what happens after they're boil washed. This is only achieved with a flat iron treatment. You can see here on Bath Beauty Aurora, that's definitely nylon before, and it still doesn't look that great after. You'll see in the before photos how big, poofy, and voluminous they are. That's why I included these, so you can kind of get an idea of what these dolls look like in the wild after being brushed or just being neglected. Their hair gets enormous. No other hair types can compare. It's just ridiculous. So the only way to get sleek results is to flat iron the crap out of them. Like at Merida, you can see how awful she was, and you can see that I had to trim a lot of their hair after because their ends were still straggly even after being boil washed and flat ironed. So this Madison has nylon hair, not saran like others, and you can tell it's a lot like Stylet Sasha's that I showed in an earlier clip. In fact, it's identical. And this is an instance where the hair actually did reform, however, it stretched and shed a lot more than saran. The last type of hair, um, it's actually kind of inclusive of many different types of hair, but it applies to all of them, would be any sort of like magic hair, memory hair, dolls that are made with a special hair gimmick. So whether they have wires in their hair to help you style it, whether their hair is um, meant to change color, whether it's supposed to like hold crimps or be curled like with just a little curling tool, these are specialty hair types. Because of this, they, they are usually made to be more sensitive, so they're made to be easily crimped, easily curled, easily changed color. You have to be careful with these hair types. You absolutely do not want to use the flat iron on these hair types ever. I have tried, and it is bad. They burn easily. You can boil wash them. They're totally safe to boil wash. Even dolls with color change hair, um, I have boil washed tons of color change dolls and their color change still works and stuff after. It's just gonna change color while you're boil washing it and then I'll go back to whatever its resting hair color is. You will see this kind of hair type on dolls from really any decade of any kind because you know obviously it's a specialty hair fiber um, but because of how delicate it is and how responsive it is to things it gets heavily damaged easily and it doesn't clean up as nicely and you don't even really have the option to flat iron because it'll just ruin the hair further so that's something to keep in mind editing Shelly here I wanted to let you know that dolls can have more than one hair type some dolls can have a combination of nylon and saran and Kanekon and saran. It makes it harder to fix them up, but I have seen this many times, like with this cat's jade who has nylon bangs and saran hair. So I hope this video was helpful. I wish that I could have you guys all here to feel the hair because if you were here and I was telling you this is Kanekon, this is nylon, this is saran, you can definitely feel the difference. But since we can't do that, I hope that this could help in some way. Like I said, the important thing to take away from this isn't so much the names of the hair types, it's more so the thickness of the hair, how resistant it is to things, and when in doubt, you always just start with a boil wash. So the thicker, the coarser, the more stubborn the hair, the more you're going to have to do, whether it's a hotter boil wash or maybe a flat iron, and the finer, fluffier, softer hair with more like flyaways and broken bits that is going to be more responsive to your treatments, that's going to style easier for you, and that's going to use less heat and will probably uh, clean up a bit faster. So that's the takeaway here. I will have all of these things uh, typed up on my Flickr. I'll link my written, I guess, um, explanation there, and I hope that the pictures I included were helpful as well. Again, I am not an expert. I'm not claiming to be an expert. I'm not trying to upset anyone. I didn't really want to make this because I know how controversial this can be, but I really want to help people and I feel like uh, this was the best way that I could help people restore their dolls in the most effective way. So uh, until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.